Example 2 says, use rules of exponents to simplify the expression. Use positive exponents to write your answer. So the first thing we need to notice here is that it says the word simplify. And what does the word simplify mean? In this context, simplifying the expression means that you should not have a negative exponent in your answer. You cannot have power to power in your answer. And you cannot have repeated basis in your answer. As long as you have one of those three, that means you're not done. And they also want us to have the answer written with positive exponents. That's part of the word simplify, so, you know, it's kind of redundant there. So we begin with y to the power of negative 2 7th multiplied by y to the power of 7 over 14. And again, I would like you to notice here that the bases are identical. Since the bases are the same, we can go ahead and do the product rule, which says you're supposed to add the exponents with one another. So we're going to add negative 2 7th with 7 over 14. And this could be done with or without a calculator. You need to know some common you know, denominator in this case. And when you do that, you will end up with y to the power of negative 4 over 14 plus 7 over 14 because the common denominator is going to be 14. And then finally, adding up the numerators with one another, we get 3 over 14. In case you don't remember how to do the fraction thing that we just did over here, you know, um, don't worry too much about it. We will discuss these things a little bit more in detail in another part of this review. So we'll get to fractions. For now, though, you can use a calculator or hopefully you remember how to do it. So the next question says negative 7 x squared y to the power of 4 with a little dot, meaning multiplication, and then negative 3x to the power of 4, y to the power of 5. So they want us to multiply these two terms. And the way we multiply these terms is we multiply everybody with their own kind. What do I mean by that? I mean, we're going to multiply the numbers in the first parentheses with the numbers in the second parentheses. We're going to multiply the x's in the first one with the x's in the second parentheses. And then same with the y's in the first parentheses and the y in the second parentheses. So keep in mind that when you're multiplying the numbers, negative 3 times negative 7 is going to be at the end positive 21. Next, we are expected to multiply the x squared and the x to the power of 4. But keep in mind, when you're multiplying x squared with x to the power of 4, the bases are the same, so the powers get added up. So 2 plus 4 will be at the end x to the power of 6. And similarly, when you multiply the y to the power of 4 with the y to the power of 5, the bases are the same. So when you multiply them, you don't actually multiply the exponents. You just combine them by adding. And in this case, the solution turns out to be y to the power of 9. And keep in mind that since there's nothing between the 21, the x, and the y, that means it's all multiplication. So let's see. Can I stop here or not? Let's verify. Are there any negative exponents? No. So that means it's good. Are there power to powers? No. So that's good. Are there any repeated bases? So is the x repeating multiple times in my answer or the y? No. So that means all the requirements have been satisfied. So that means this is the answer. And I can stop and move on to the next question. Let's take a look at part three next, which is very similar to part two, except we now have some exponents on the outside of the parentheses. So the tricky part here is to get rid of those exponents first before we do what we did in part two. And in order to do that, we're going to look inside the parentheses and we're going to notice that there's a product inside. So that means we need to use the product to power rule. So the two is going to get its own exponent. The x to the power of negative two that was there is going to get its own exponent. The same thing is going to happen with the y. And again, we do the same thing with the second parentheses, which has x cubed and the three again y to the power of 8 gets a 3 again. So again, we're taking the power that was on the outside and giving it to all the bases inside the parentheses. At this point, let's clean up a little bit. So 2 to the power of 4, that's basically 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. x to the power of negative 2 to the power of 4 is going to be x to the power of negative 8, because when you have the same base and power to power, you multiply the powers. y to the power of 4 is next then x to the power of 3 to the power of 3. Again, we have power to power, which is going to be 9. And then finally, y to the power of 8 to the power of 3. This is, again, power to power rule. So we multiply the 8 and 3 to get 24. And as you can see, hopefully, 
The 16 doesn't have any friends, so we're just going to write it first. We next have to deal with the x's. There's x to the power of negative 8 and x to the power of 9. They are the same kind, so we're supposed to multiply them together. Again, when you multiply the bases, add the exponents. So just add on the side what is negative 8 plus 9. When you add it, it's equal to 1. So we're going to have x to the power of 1. And finally, y to the power of 4, y to the power of 24. Again, the bases are the same, so they're going to get together. And again, because the bases are the same and the, you know we're multiplying them, we have to add the exponents. 4 and 24 on the side is 28. So we're going to have y to the power of 28 in the solution. So 16x, y to the power of 28. There are no repeated bases. There are no negative exponents. There are no power to power. So that means we are finished with this problem. The next one may sound complicated, but it's really straightforward. So what we're going to do for this problem is deal with the numerators first, figure out what the answer is supposed to be there, and then pay attention to what's going on with the denominator. So we'll do it one step at a time. So first of all, there is x repeating twice in the numerator. So that means we are expected to add the exponents together. So 3 half gets added with the second exponent, which in this case is negative 1 half, all divided by x to the power of negative 2 thirds. So 3 half plus negative 1 half, that's the same thing as 3 over 2 minus 1 over 2, which is at the end 2 over 2, which is the same thing as 1. So this is x to the power of 1, all divided by x to the power of negative 2 thirds. And finally, I'm noticing that now there is a base that's repeating on the numerator and the denominator. And according to the rules, I'm supposed to take the numerator on the um, exponent, subtract from it the denominator exponent. So in other terms, I am expected to do 1 minus the negative 2 thirds. Pay attention here because even though the rule says negative, I'm also putting a second negative because of the power that was on the denominator, the negative 2 thirds. And at this point, you got to remember that negative negative is positive and 1 plus 2 thirds is the same thing as 5 thirds. So that's the solution at this point.